while everyone's panicking about Britain's boneheaded decision to leave the EU, let's not forget that longer term, the stock market's a lot more than just geopolitics. We have a real economy that's driven by incredible innovations, progress. Something that was crystal clear to me when I went out to San Francisco last week to visit the beating heart of Silicon Valley. Whatever happens in the UK or the EU, great American companies will continue to churn out astonishing new technologies. And look, technological innovation is no longer something that's confined to the tech sector. Consider the auto industry. Your average car now has more technology inside it than your average computer. Last week, I got a chance to chat with Mark Fields, the president and CEO of Ford Motor, about all these advances as we toured Ford's Silicon Valley Research and Innovation Center. And while I know that Ford's stock can be buffeted by Brexit, exerting downward pressure on its earnings most definitely. So you might want to wait to buy the stock. Longer term, I believe this stuff's got to pay off. So take a look. So here, Hi. Uh, here's Janish. Hi, Janish. How are you, Janish? And, you know, here we're going we're gonna to give you some of information on how we're developing camera technology. Oh. And this is one area of Ford Smart Mobility that we're focusing on. And one of them is autonomous vehicles. And okay. this relates directly to that. So what you see here is a live feed of uh, this lab, as you can see, and, and feel free to move around, it'll, right. it'll capture you. The blue boxes that you see there are the uh, results of a pedestrian detection algorithm that's only camera-based. These technologies are so, they're advancing so greatly. We want to be uh, aware of all the what's the latest and greatest and then be ahead of the game of what we can do by achieving all of these. Now, the reason why this is important is because autonomous vehicles, as Mark mentioned, we need to have a complete 360-degree understanding of the environment and really be able to perceive everything that happens uh, around the vehicle, like pedestrians, cyclists, other vehicles, etc. And these sensors are essentially the eyes of the vehicle. Well, I think you'll see, you know, there's different levels of autonomous vehicles. A level four vehicle is where the passenger doesn't have to take control of the vehicle. And we'll probably see a level four vehicle in a predefined area that's been mapped beforehand, probably by the end of the decade, by, you know, the next four years or so. Our approach, as you heard from Janesh, is when we come out with ours, we want it to make it accessible to everyone and not just folks that can afford luxury cars. And that's why working on the technology, reducing the number of cameras, uh, will be able to lower the cost so we can provide the value to the customer. Here's another example of what we're working on in terms of autonomous vehicles. And we've been at this for over 10 years now. Okay. Uh, Tori's gonna tell you a little bit about some of sure. the technology. Hey, Tori. Jim Kramer, how are you? you? Thanks, Mark. So Jim, behind me here is one of a member of our autonomous vehicle fleet. So the spinning sensors on top are called LIDARs. So those are the eyes of the vehicle. And what that allows us to do is these fire two million laser pulses a second to create a model of the driving environment in three dimensions. Is the gating factor uh, that we're not sure how well it works or that it works, but it would cost us now 200,000, we've got to get it to 20,000? So that's, that's one thing we've been working on is slowly improving the technology and working with our technology partners to make it more scalable so it's something we can sell to all of our customers. All right, Mark, tell me about this. Okay, so this is another area we're making progress on uh, Ford Smart Mobility. This is around connectivity and the customer experience. And we're taking advantage of our sync system. And we are the first to work with Amazon so that from your Ford, you're able to access your smart devices in your home. Let me show you how this works. Okay. Let's, let's, say, let's say, and we're using our our, our fusion plug-in hybrid here, which, by the way, gets 610 mile range, the most of any vehicle on the planet. And uh, so let's say you wake up in the morning and it's a little cold morning in, in New York and you want to start your car so it's warm. Uh, here's Alexa and, you, and you basically say, Alexa, tell my Ford to start the car. And it's going up to the cloud the right now. Has been sent to your vehicle. It gets sent to your vehicle and as you'll notice, the vehicle comes on. You're not hearing the engine because it's electric, electric mode, right. but it's on right now. So it's warming up. And let's say you're coming down, you, you've showered, mm -hmm. you've had your breakfast, you're coming out. You say, Alexa, tell my Ford to unlock the car. The unlock command has been sent to your vehicle. So it's sent to the vehicle and it's unlocked. So there you go. Okay, so let's say you're uh, coming home from work mm -hmm. and you want to open your garage door and today you either have to reach in and get your clicker or, or go above your visor. All you have to do here, Alexa, All right, sir. open my garage door. Your garage door opens up. Now think about going forward as Amazon adds more uh, 
smart devices right. to, to Alexa. Think of your driving home. We'll be able to take advantage of that through your Ford. Let's say you're driving home, you got people coming over. Oh my gosh, I gotta start the roast in the oven. Alexa, start my oven, you know, 20 minutes before you get home. Or start, you know, turn up my air conditioning. This is around making people's lives better and using technology and partnering with great companies like Amazon to do that. And this is another example of Ford Smart Mobility in the areas of connectivity and data analytics, okay. working with drones and how do our vehicles in the future work with drones to make people's lives more productive and, and better. Let's say you're a farmer in Wyoming and, you know, you're, you're driving amongst your ranch mm -hmm. and you got a missing calf, right? So today you got a missing calf, you got to search all over, mm -hmm. you got to drive all over. Think about, you know, farmer has their, their drone in the vehicle as they're driving along. The drone goes up, finds the calf, and he can drive right there towards it. It's just now making people's lives more productive and better. We'll give you a little, little example here. Well, how did it work? I mean, did someone say at a certain point, because you're in a competition, you know what would really be valuable is to have a, a drone be able to fly off of a, a 150 that's, go, that's mobile? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've tried to think of what the use cases that we could work with DJI to do. Um, we've done an integration in this case with Sync3 and AppLink, right. so that all of these competitors, they're able to launch their drone and recover it just by pressing a, bu a button on the Sync3 screen. Um, so this enables all kinds of things. First responders can drive along, scout out the area with, and right. see where survivors may be before putting themselves in harm's way. A uh, farmer can survey their uh, crops. Uh, construction can do aerial surveys of sites without having to get out of the vehicle, potentially. Um, so there are numerous applications, and this is just the first step towards I mean, that. This would be the classic of if there's an accident, uh, and the police are trying to figure out how they can get there, and what's the state, and do they need fire? For, is it going to be fire? Is it just going to be uh, one guy? Is it, is it just AAA? Uh, but they don't know, and, and they're just kind of right now just hopeful to get lucky to find out, right? <laughs> and this eliminates that. Sure, it can help in all kinds of situations where you need the ability to remotely see something to uh, you know, put yourself in places that you can't be while you're in the vehicle. Right. All and right, excellent. Well, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate it. Thanks, yeah, Jim. Appreciate it. Good talking to you. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.